Granite Mutual Fund earned 9.5% last year. The fund had a standard deviation of 10% and a beta equal to 0.93. The R squared for that regression was 0.55. Over the same time period, the S&P 500 generated an 11% return with a standard deviation of 14%. The return on treasury bills was 4%. Calculate the Sharpe ratios for both the Granite Mutual Fund and for the S&P 500. Let's remember that the Sharpe ratio is equal to the return on the portfolio minus the risk-free rate of return divided by the standard deviation of the portfolio. Well, for Granite Mutual Fund, we have the return on that portfolio was 9.5%. The risk-free rate is 4%, and the standard deviation of the fund was 10%. This gives us a sharp measure of 0.55. Now let's calculate the sharp ratio for the S&P 500. The S&P generated an 11% return. The risk-free rate, 4%. The standard deviation of the S&P 500 was 14, generating a sharp measure or ratio of 0.5. What can we conclude from this information? Well, Granite Mutual Fund outperformed the S&P 500 on a risk-adjusted basis. Okay, here's the same problem, but this time we're asked to solve for the trainer ratio. So we see, again, that Granite Mutual Fund earned 9.5% last year. It had a standard deviation of 10% and a beta equal to 0.93. Again, notice the R squared is 0.55. Over the same time period, S&P 500 generated an 11% return with a standard deviation of 14%. The return on treasury bills was 4%. Calculate trainer for both the Granite Mutual Fund and for the S&P 500. Well, let's remember the trainer statistic is determined by taking the return on the portfolio minus the risk-free rate and dividing it by the beta of the portfolio. So for Granite Mutual Fund, we have a return of 9.5%. We've got a risk-free rate of 4%, and then we have a beta of 0.93, giving us a trainer ratio equal to 5.91. Now for the S&P 500. The S&P 500 generated an 11% return. 4% is the risk-free rate. Since the S&P 500 is representing the market, it is our proxy for the market, and we remember that the market has a beta of 1. This generates for us a trainer equal to 7%. So what can we conclude? We can conclude on a risk-adjusted basis that the S&P 500 outperformed Granite Mutual Fund. Okay, here's the same company, and now we're asked to calculate the alpha for Granite Mutual Fund. So again, we've got a 9.5% rate of return on Granite Mutual Fund. A standard deviation of 10, we've got the beta equal to 0.93. The S&P generated the 11% return. With a standard deviation of 14%, the return on Treasury bills was 4%. Calculate alpha. Okay, so to calculate alpha, we remember we have to take the actual return on the portfolio and we subtract from that the expected rate of return using the capital asset pricing model. And so we ought to have all of the information to solve for cap M. The actual return on the portfolio was 9.5%. Plugging in our information, the risk-free rate was 4. The return on the market was 11. The beta was 
So we get 9.5% actual return minus the expected rate using CAFM 10.51, which gives us a negative alpha of 1.01%. What can we conclude from this information? Well, it appears that on a risk-adjusted basis, Granite Mutual Fund underperformed the market. Okay? The negative alpha, negative 1.01, .01, is an absolute measure of performance, and Granite Mutual Fund underperformed the market on a risk-adjusted basis by 1.01%. .01%. So let's summarize here. We had the same information and we solved for Sharp and Trainer and Jensen. So which portfolio actually performed better on a risk-adjusted basis over the last year? Well, if we go by the Sharp measure, if you will recall, the Granite Mutual Fund outperformed the S&P. According to Trainer, however, the Granite Mutual Fund underperformed the S&P. Alpha also indicated that Granite Mutual Fund underperformed the S&P. So which one performed better? Should we use beta or standard deviation to evaluate risk in this example? And does it matter? Well, remember, our R squared from this regression was 0.55. The regression that produced the beta of 0.93 only had a 0.55 R-squared, which indicates really that only 55% of the volatility of Granite Mutual Fund is explained by the S&P 500. That's a pretty low R-squared. So when you have a low R squared, you're much better off to use standard deviation as the measure of risk. So Granite Mutual Fund appears to have outperformed the S&P 500 on a risk-adjusted basis. What are the key points? Well, we've got three different measures of portfolio performance, risk-adjusted portfolio performance. The Sharpe Ratio is a relative measure of risk-adjusted performance. That means that you can't simply look at the value of the Sharpe Ratio and determine whether it was good or bad. It's very, very difficult to interpret on its own. It must be compared to another Sharpe Ratio. Okay? That's what we mean when we say it's relative. The value the significance of the sharp ratio is relative to the uh, a comparison to another sharp. Also, it should be noted that the sharp ratio adjusts for total risk, right? Standard deviation is in the denominator. So the sharp ratio looks at excess return per unit of total risk. Trainer ratio is also a relative measure of performance. Same interpretation. It's very difficult to look at the value of trainer and assess whether or not it was superior or inferior performance. One must compare a trainer measure against another trainer measure. Notice in the, numer in, in the denominator that in the denominator we have beta, the beta of the portfolio. So the trainer ratio adjusts for systematic risk. Alpha is an absolute measure of portfolio performance. A positive value is good news. It would imply that the value was added to the portfolio return as a result of portfolio management. A negative alpha is not good news. Similar to trainer ratio, Jensen's alpha uses systematic risk. It adjusts for systematic risk. We know that because it uses beta. Therefore, the reliability of both the alpha measure and the trainer measure is really dependent upon the reliability of beta.